When I was in my 20s, I lived in a lot of host families during my two years in the Up With People program. And the last day in every town was the same. The host family would make us a sack lunch that we could eat on the bus on our way to the next town. And one day, I was saying goodbye to my host family and fussing with my luggage. So I didn't realize until the bus was well on its way that I had left my sack lunch on the curb. So at lunchtime, when I opened my bag, there was nothing there. But the person in the seat next to me had her host family sack lunch, and she offered to share it with me. And I still remember how this went. In the bag were two mandarins, so she gave me one. There was a good-sized turkey sandwich, so she gave me half. There was a cheese stick. She broke that in half, too. And there was a little baggie with two homemade cookies from the host mom, and she gave me one. And here is the crazy part. We both were full. It didn't make sense because it wasn't an enormous amount of food. She certainly could have eaten that lunch and not felt over full, but, but in sharing it, we both had enough. Because of stories like that, some people don't believe that the story I just proclaimed from the gospel is actually a miracle. Some people say, you know, it's really a story about sharing. If everybody just shares, there'll be enough. And I agree with that. I think that's a beautiful way to look at this. And I'm never against sharing. But I think if we look at the details of this story, we can see that that is not what this is about. You can try to take five loaves and two fish and spread them as thinly as you can, and you will not feed 5,000 people. This is obviously not just about sharing. This is a major miracle. And it reveals to us a spiritual law that we need to understand that's related to an earlier law. Do you remember two weeks ago when we heard the story about Jesus sending the disciples two by two? And we learned that there is a spiritual law at work there. He told them not to bring much with them because miracles don't come out of what you have. They come out of what you lack. So you don't want to bring a lot of supplies. Because if you find it in your purse, it's not a miracle. If you had it in your duffel bag, it's not a miracle. Miracles come out of the things we don't have, the things we lack. And today we hear the continuation of that spiritual law in this story. The corollary to that law is that miracles not only show up in what you lack, but to manifest the miracle, you have to start by offering to God the little insufficient part that you have, knowing that it's not going to solve the problem, but offering it anyway. That is what God uses in order to create the miracle. So we have all sorts of stories like that. There's a famous one from the Bible that we heard not long ago. Do you remember the story of Elijah during the time of the famine, looking for food and coming to the home of a widow who had one son? And he said, I am starving. Please give me something to eat. And she said, please do not ask me that. I don't have anything. I have half a palm full of flour, and I have a tiny puddle of oil, and I'm going to make a little cake out of that, and I'm going to split it with my son, and it's going to be our last meal. We're going to starve to death after this. And he said, I want you to give it to me anyway. And I don't know how she did it. I imagine with a lot of tears, but she made this little tortilla, and she gave it to him. And do you remember what happened? For the rest of the famine and for the rest of her life, her jar of flour never went empty. It didn't fill up. It just always had a little bit more. Whenever she put her scoop in there, there was always more flour. And there was always just a little more oil in the jug, maybe just half an inch, but she could never use it all up no matter how hard she tried. God takes the little bit that we can offer and pulls the miracle out of it. And it doesn't come from what we have. It comes from what we lack. These stories happen all the time. There's one in my family. There's probably one in yours. Many of you have heard me talk about my Polish grandmother, my bocce, 
Bachi told a story about her parents, Babcha and Jaja, who came from Poland in 1901. When they got on that boat, speaking no English, they had five children. And then when they got here and settled in Waterville, they had seven more. Twelve children total. And they never spoke English, and they did it all on one income. Jaja worked at a foundry in Waterville, and Babcha stayed home and raised the 12 kids. My Bachi told me that whenever her mother found out she was pregnant, she would always say this prayer in front of the whole family. She'd say, Father, if you're going to put another mouth at my table, then put more soup in my pot. <laughs> and she raised her family right into the Great Depression. They never spoke English. They worked as laborers, and they always had enough. They never went hungry. This is exactly what we're called to do. What Bob just said to God in that prayer is, I'm going to give my all, and it's not going to be enough. My all is not going to be enough. But I know that you will bless my all, and you'll make it enough. And that's exactly what happened. As I look out over the assembly this morning, I see several people who have been anointed with the anointing of the sick. And some of you had it recently. You know then that part of that ritual is I invite everyone who's present to help the sick person to cup their hands into a bowl. And then we ask God to open the treasuries of heaven and send down every gift that the sick person is going to need for the challenge they're facing. So we ask for strength and peace and courage and all those gifts that only God can give. And then I collect them from each person there and then I place them on the head of the sick person. And I cannot tell you the miracles that have come from that. When we do that ritual, what we're saying to God is, God, we're doing everything we can. We've been to endless appointments, and it is not enough. It has not solved this. The doctors do not have an answer. So we're turning to you, and we're going to give you what we've got to give, our prayers, our intention, our love, and it's going to be up to you to do the rest. What we have isn't enough. It hasn't fixed the problem. But we know that you can. And if you've experienced this, you know the miracles that have come from that. Right in our own community. People who've recovered. People who were at the end of their rope and somehow were able to find new strength to go on and make it through. It's amazing. We offer to God the little bit we have. We say it's not enough. We're giving you a ton of lack. And then God pulls the miracle out of that. This week, we are doing something that the church does worldwide every three years in the summer. The last time we did this was 2015. What we do is take five weeks and we leave the Gospel of Mark, which we've been reading all year, and we turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 6, to learn all about how Jesus provides everything we need. And it's meant to be a five-week retreat that helps us to trust God more. It's like a, a boost, a kickstart to better trust in God by focusing on the Eucharist using the stories from the sixth chapter of John's gospel. And this is the first one. And we are called to see how God is going to provide for us whatever we need. So as we begin this five-week retreat with all the other Catholics in the world, we are being invited to ask ourselves this question. How has God provided for me in my life? When are the times that all of the odds were against me, but somehow I still had what I needed? What were the ways that God showed up? Was it a time when you went to the store and realized once you got to the counter that you had no wallet and you started furiously just going through your pockets and in the pocket of a sweater that you haven't worn in months, you find a $10 bill crumpled up? When has someone shared their lunch with you and it turned out to be enough? When have you or someone you loved been at the end of your rope and thought you had no more to give and something gave you a second wind? These are the miracles. These are the ways that God shows up in our lives. They're hidden in plain sight right in front of our face. And what we are called to do 
is to pray the prayer that Bapcha prayed. God, I'm going to give my all, and it's not going to be enough. But I know that you're going to do the rest.